we did meet when Dee was in the hospital for the very first time. And, uh, and you love me ever since. See how easy it is to love me? <laughs> yeah, that was in Little Rock. We went down there and they'd say, didn't think Dee was going to. Dee had an actual aneurysm. Some of you don't know that story. But, yeah, I met her. And we, we went over and we even had a little lunch while he was in there trying to get well. Then we ate, we ate while he was getting Yeah. <laughs> But uh, anyway, we uh, we did meet there the very first time, and and it's been been like a mom to me ever since. And just thank you for being in here today. It's an honor to have you. I know you watch us a lot and see us a lot, but we're glad you're live today. Amen. So m- the media ministry is our ministry of the month, and we've got a picture of all pictures in here of somebody. And if you didn't get a bulletin, you need to get this and post this on your on this picture on your. Um, refrigerator it's Brad <laughs> and uh, <laughs> media is now I, I gotta keep my microphone on um, we asked we asked him why he liked serving on the media team and this is his response I've always been interested in video and the church gave me the opportunity to learn in 2015 I hope to be able to bring bigger and better recordings for my church and people outside of the church that can't be here at church. He said old dogs can learn new tricks. Thanks for serving, Brad. Thank you for serving. Would you give Brad a hand for serving? Amen. I'm always stretching him just a little bit more each time. Amen. But uh, he always said old dogs can't. I said old dogs can so we can treat, we can change anybody on that one. So, all right, thank you, Christy, and uh, we're going we're gonna to preach a little bit today. And all right, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, sounds good. So, a lot of things going on. A lot of things happening this weekend, and uh, we. Uh, we want to sh- I want to share with you something that I this came in my spirit the first of the week with a lot of the things I guess you know everything going on just kind of works in your spirit a little bit too I mean my heart is heavy for a lot of times and 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 you you see so much pressure but then in your own life in my own life and in other people's lives that I know that's not really facing that any major storms but they're facing any storm is major to us amen would you agree with that and talking about these sins, she did, I didn't know she was going to sing the song this morning, but that was right in line with where we're heading. But there was something in the beginning of time that took place in the very beginning in Genesis that happened. And, and I've read it, and I've read it many times. And something I want to build off of today, I want to build off this a little bit today. My title of my message will take a little, I'm going to build into it. But the title of my message today is God is for us do you do you really know that god is for you how many times have you how many times in your life have you may have said where is god have you ever said it how many times have you ever said is god even for me anymore and you say well i've never said them words well you maybe said something like it but i want to encourage you today And I'm going to bring enough word to you today, enough scripture to prove that God is for you. And that God loves you so much. Amen. I want you to look at this though with me in Genesis, the third chapter, verse 1 through 5. I want to kind of take you back and then bring you back into this. Because there's something taking place here. And and the serpent was more cunning in in the New King James. And the other word for that is crafty. He was more crafty than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, listen, he begins to talk to the woman. Has God indeed said? Now notice, he makes a statement to Eve and says, has God indeed said? Another version of the Bible said, Did God actually say, You shall not eat of any tree in the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, 
we may eat, we may eat the fruit of the tree of the garden. Verse 3. But of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Notice what the serpent is saying to the woman. The serpent is telling her, the serpent is telling her this very thing. The serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die. I'm going to tell you that Satan is a liar and he's the father of all lies. And from the beginning of time, he began to try to distort from the beginning to now. He has tried to distort the very thoughts of men and women and boys and girls. I don't care your age. He does not care about that. He wants to distort the mind and tell you that God does not care about you. He wants to tell you that, that you can go ahead and do those things that that pastor may preach against or the word may teach against. But the thing is, you go ahead and do it. God ain't going to do anything about it. Let me tell you something. God is going to do something about it. God is grace and God is mercy. But there is coming a day when God will change seats and sit on the judgment seat. Amen. I'm thankful for grace and mercy today. Amen. For God knows that when you eat of it, listen what he tells her. He says, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you'll be like God, knowing good and evil. This is a thing that is taking place is Satan is trying to convince Eve that it's okay to take of the tree that she was told by God not to take of the tree. How many know that, that the enemy will try to get you to do the very opposite of what the word says? He'll try to get you to do the very opposite of what God says. See, John 8, 44 tells us that the Satan, he says that here in scripture, he said, you are the father, the devil. Everybody say the devil. I know we, we're going to get to the good part. And the desires of your father you want to do. How many know what I'm talking about? We all in here, there ain't one of us in this building today or live today that does not want to do the desires of our Father, our Heavenly Father. We want to please Him. Amen? Is everybody in agreement with that? Amen? We want to please our Heavenly Father. You want to do. But let me tell you something. The Bible teaches here, John wrote, he said he was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth. Because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources. For he is a liar and the father of it. You understand who I'm talking about today, right? It is your enemy. It is the devil. It is the one that has been putting thoughts into your head because you have been allowing him to put those thoughts down in your head and causing you to fail and doubt God on the things he said he can do. Amen? See, the devil's strategy is that he intends to deceive us. He wants to deceive us. He wants. See, the Bible says he was a murderer. We don't even like to think of him as a murderer. He's a murderer. Satan is a murderer. Amen? He is someone to come to steal, to kill, and destroy. We've heard these scriptures over and over. But somehow, with all that being said, in our thoughts, we allow the enemy to set in and to begin to attack our thoughts and begin to attack our mind. And then we begin to believe a lie over the truth. Isn't it amazing how we can believe a lie over truth? He speaks from his own resources. What is his resources? Man, it's, there ain't nothing good in it. His resources are, 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 are not good resources. But his resources, the only thing, the only thing he's got is usually what we use against ourselves. You know, Satan don't know the future. You understand that? Satan don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. But he don't even know what's going on in your life until you open your mouth. I heard, a, I heard one, one person say one time, he said, if, if the believers would keep their mouth shut, he would never know what was going on. 
But what's happening is, as believers, as Christians, we get in this place. How many know you? How many's ever been negative? Come on. And we said, oh, and we started speaking out those negative things. Are you with me? Them thoughts began to come real. They become reality. He will also come to you and challenge your belief. Satan will challenge your belief. See, the adversary, the devil, 1 Peter 5, 8 says, The adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. See, we're all tempted. We've all been tempted. Are you with me today? Amen. There's nobody perfect in this building. I know you thought you were, and I thought I was one time. But nobody's perfect but one called Jesus Christ. Amen. We are all tempted. And many times that temptation comes with a lot of wonder and a lot of, well, what ifs. And, well, if God could and if God will. And, well, if this and if that. You know what? If we get the if out and say, I know he can. I know he will because the word says he will. The word tells me he can. Why don't we stand on that truth and say, God, I believe you. I trust you with all that is within me. Amen. But instead, it's so much easier to say, where are you, God? All tempted to wonder, and, and many times, I want to I help you this, but we wonder where God's at. But I want to tell you, God never took his mind off of you. God has never, never took his mind off of you. Do you understand God thinks about you a lot? Do you understand that God's mind is tuned into your heart, cry, your needs, everything that's going on in you? God is in tune with that. His eye is focused on all of us in this building. He is focused even on our present situations. He is involved in the present things that's going on in your life. And you think, where are you, God? I need some help. I need some peace. I need some comfort. I need some joy. I need some direction. I need some answers. I need, God, I need, I need. Whatever your need is today, the Word tells me that He said He would supply all of our needs according to His riches in glory. 2 Corinthians 10, 5 says that we should take every thought. And we can read the whole scripture. He said, casting down arguments and every high thing. This is the thing we got to do is stop arguing with ourselves and, and trying to bring an argument in. Because when you start arguing in this, it brings the enemy involved. Amen? He said to cast down arguments, cast down every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. If what's coming out of your mouth is not the word and not the knowledge of God, then you and I are exalting ourselves against the knowledge of God. Bringing every thought. I wish somebody would get this today. Bringing every thought, not some thoughts, not the thoughts I want to give to God, but every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. What kind of thoughts are we to take captive? What ones are we going to take captive? How many of them? All of them, right? Every single thought. Thoughts that come to your mind that are contrary to what God's Word says about you. The, the things that come to your thoughts that in your mind that are contrary to what you believe. These are things that we need to get under captive according to the obedience of Christ. Are you with me today? Amen? Amen. The thoughts that come to your mind that, that cause you to, to look at things and say things about, about other things that are going on. See, thoughts can become actions. Will you all agree with that? And you say, how can you prove that? I proved it in Genesis, the third chapter, if you listened. Amen? The Genesis third chapter, you find that we had, had Eve in a moment, and the enemy had got in the thought and began to make her think. And then after she thought, she acted upon the lie instead of the truth that she knew. So much easier to act on a lie than a truth. It's easier to go with a lie than it is the truth, always. The lie will sooner or later become light, though. Amen? I want you to look at this because thoughts become actions. You can think something about somebody for so long until before long you might act on it. That went over good. Thoughts can become actions. Actions can become habits. 
And as it all starts, where? With a single thought. See, the devil is so crafty. I'm not here today to lift up the devil. It sounds like it right now. But I'm fixing to blow his doors off. I'm fixing to blow him up here, all right? Because I taught you last week that the gates of hell cannot prevail. Come on, amen? Amen. Did I teach you that? Those that are here, I, I, I taught on how the gates of hell cannot prevail. Well, I'm here today to tell you that I've got to tell you, because the Bible says that, I, I said this last week, and this is where my challenge came in, because I said something about y'all being ignorant. <laughs> the Bible says, be ye not ignorant of his devices. So if I don't come back to this week and tell you his devices, I ain't got the right to call anybody ignorant. I ain't got the right to look in the mirror and say, hey, Driggers, quit being ignorant. Come on, amen? I know that sounds bullying today, but let me tell you, it's the word of God. Amen? It's not bullying. Ignorant is not a downgrade. Ignorant is say, pay attention and get it right. Amen? Ignorant to his devices. Let me tell you, he's crafty in communicating negative messages to us. He will do everything in his power to keep us from getting on the right track and the right thinking. He will bombard our thoughts because he knows that most people don't even think about what they're thinking about. Let me say that one more time. Most people don't even think about what they're thinking about. I'm not preaching to you. I'm preaching with you. Come on, somebody say amen. He knows He knows, Satan knows that you and I will believe his lie if he tells us enough. Also, many times in our thought, these things come to our mind. So we have to be committed to know, to learn, and to retrain our thinking. How many know that we don't, you know, Brad said it best, it's hard to teach old dog new tricks. Well, I want to tell you, you can teach old things, new things when you get in the Word of God because it will renew it. Amen? So we have to be committed to know, to learn, and to retrain our thinking. We have to work at believing God's voice. How many know the Bible teaches us that we should know His voice? The Bible says we should know His voice. The sheep, my sheep, shall know my voice. So if that is the truth, and that is very true, then why are you listening to the wrong voice? Why are you listening to voices? Why are you not listening to a voice? Well, I never heard God speak. Oh, I got to read it to hear him. Oh, come on, come on. See, it's easier for me just to believe a lie and leave the Bible where it's at. Let it catch the dust that's coming through because I ain't got time to read. I ain't got time to focus in on that because that would retrain my thoughts, retrain my mind. It'd give me a new mind, and I'd get a new heart, and then I'd be all new, and then I wouldn't know what to do with myself because I don't have anything negative for an enemy to get a hold of me because I'm not letting him in anymore. I'm taking every thought captive, every thought captive. So when the enemy says, God's not there, you say, liar. Get out of my face because God is with me. Amen? I know it sounds a little rough there, but it's time that we get a little rough. We get a little rough around the edges and start telling the devil how it is instead of kicking back in your recliner and saying, well, I know it's so bad. God, where are you? Where are you, God? God says, I'm right here. I'm right here where I've been. I've been right here the whole time. But we allow these thoughts. Somebody say thoughts. We have to retrain our thinking. We have to work at believing God's voice, God's word that's spoken right through the word of God. More than all other voices that have spoken into our life. Do you know we have family? Oh, come on. I don't mean to get in this. But do you know we have family that speak in our lives that we need to go? I know it ain't good. How many know we got friends that we need to go? We got, we got things being spoken to our lives that we need to shut off and only hear one voice. If it's not God's voice and God's word, shut it off. Amen? 
Are y'all with me? We got to retrain. We got to rethink, including our own selves. That's including pastor to the back of this church. We all have to practice this. This is not something that you're going to walk out of here today and go, I got this. Because first thing into this game, you're going you're gonna to feel that very negative message come. You may, get a, you may get the phone call. You may get the text. But let me tell you something. When you get it, you remind yourself today in that you were in the house and you heard the word of God. And Satan is a liar and he's a murderer and he cannot have my family. He cannot have anybody. He has to take his hands off in Jesus' name today. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on and give Jesus a praise in this place. Amen. He's worthy. Hallelujah. We have to begin every day. Every day. Get up out of the bed. Check yourself. Check your thoughts. Ask yourself, where do I want to end up today? What about victory? What about peace? What about joy? What about those things we talked about? Take God's thoughts and replace yours with his. Sometimes we love to blame the devil for, well, he came and made me believe it. Well, you got up thinking about it. He's just in my head all the time. You're thinking about it. Well, it's hard not to think about it. I look at it every day. I'm a, it's got a reminder in the mirror every day when I look at myself and I look at my family. I look at this. I look at that. I go to work. I see those people. I see this. I see that. Man, we can come up with all the great excuses, but we don't want to make the right choice and say, excuse me, devil. You're going to have to move over today. Thoughts? Excuse me today, but you ain't got no control today. Me and my word and my God are going to think on this day. Amen? Amen. Doesn't the Bible teach us to think on the good things? Amen. Take God's thoughts. Replace yours with His. It's a process of renewing your mind. The Bible didn't say just renew it once. He said renewing. Keep on renewing. Renew your mind. The Bible said in the scripture is, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing. Renewing. If he had said renewed, that's what he had said. He said renewing. That's ongoing. You're going to have to keep renewing. Renew it. Renew it. Renew it. <laughs> Our mind is just, I know you think, I know all of us think we're just super smart, right? And we all know better, Right? God is the smart one. God is the one in control. He takes this mind of ours and he renews it when we allow him to. Amen? And he renews it when we feed it the right things. We got to start every morning by filling our mind with the word of God. I don't have time to read. Instead of the TV, turn on a speaker. Turn on somebody that's talking the word of God. I mean, there's plenty out there. I recommend for you. I mean, Jensen Franklin, Stephen Furtick, Kenneth Copeland, Kenneth Hagen, Chuck Swindo, Swindo. I'm just kidding. I know his name. <laughs> but but do we everybody in here? I know I know Marty listens to different ones while he's driving. I, I've got the calls. Hey, where's this at in the box? You know, I've, I've got calls. Like, where? Ha, hey, what is this? The thing is, church. It's all good. We're all listening to the word. If they're speaking word, if they're speaking the word of God, let me tell you something. Let it come in. If, if you ain't got time to pick it up that morning, turn on something good. Turn off the country station and the rock station and turn on some good word of God. Amen? Just go to work one day. Change your way to work and say, you know what? I'm going to feed my mind just of the good things. Amen? Sometimes you have to turn off KLRC because they talk junk too. Amen? And you got to, I don't mean it. I'm sorry, Facebook Live, but it's true. Amen. The thing is, is we got to turn some of it off sometime and turn God back on. Now, I know songs have a message. I know you can listen to music, and some of you get it through music, and that's all right. Music is good, but there's still something about the good old word of God. Amen. Somebody need to preach with me in here today. Amen. This word has not ever left, not ever changed. Amen. It's the same. Feed it with this. And you'll see a difference in your day, in your week, in your thoughts. And all of a sudden you wake up on Friday and Saturday, you'll go, it's Sunday. I think I need to go to church today. Amen? Can't wait. But we've got to start the day out by filling our mind with the Word of God. 
I need to remind myself what God says about me. I need to remind myself what he says about you. Come on. Say it. I need to remind myself what God says about me. Because the enemy's going to try to tell you something different, just like he did Eve in the beginning of time. Satan hasn't changed. Same old tricks, same old lies. The devil has no new tricks. You read out the course of the Bible, the enemy has no new tricks. Same old ones. When I, when, when, when I get armed, when you get armed, when we all get armed with the truth of God's word, we're going to be able to contend with some things in our life. What are those things in our life? Well, I've named them before, and I'm going to name them again. Number one, it seems like the biggest one the enemy loves is fear. See, Job, a lot of that happened in his life. If you read it, it's because the very thing he feared came on him. Read it in there. The very thing he feared came on him. Doubt. How about doubt? Anybody? Nobody ever doubts? Nobody here has ever doubted. And you're a liar, and you can come down here and repent. Amen? Every one of us in here have doubted in our life. Come on. Every one of us allowed fear in our life. This is one that's really a big one, I think, in our, in our society today. More and more and more and more it gets bigger is insecurity. The enemy loves when you feel insecure. Another one that's really big is negativity. He loves when you start speaking negativity. He loves it. Because you're now on his side. You're speaking his lie. You're speaking his lie. And you're speaking negative. You're negative, ne negative, negative, negative about this and negative about that. Now, I'm not saying there ain't nothing wrong with saying the facts of what's going on. This is what's happening in my life. That's not negative. There ain't nothing negative about that. But it's when you take them words that you just said is wrong with me and say the negative, I don't know. I guess God don't love me. I guess God don't care about me. I guess that's the lie of the devil. Do you see the difference? Amen. Why is God? Why, God? Why, 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 why? Quit the why and say, Lord, I know you're going to bring me through. Come on, amen? Yeah, yeah. The lie of the enemy wants to keep you down every single day. If he can keep you down and keep a hand on you, then no truth is going to come up out of you. Amen? Yeah. Let's all commit. How many want to commit with me today? Come on, let's all commit. I'm not asking for an auto call yet. Let's all commit that, that in the morning that we're going to replace our thought with God's thought and it will, it will begin to change your life. I, will, I, would love, I would love for some of you in here to text me tomorrow and say, Pastor, I started my day out different, and man, what a day I'm having. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, that don't mean you can stop on Tuesday morning. <laughs> that don't mean you can stop on Wednesday morning. You've got you to gotta start it out, and you've got to keep it going. Amen? Yes. Everybody say this word with me one more time, and I'm going to move forward. Renewing. I want you to get that because it's a continual thing. You've got to continue to renew this mind. Psalms 34, and I'm going to kind of jump some scriptures here. If you're taking notes, I'm going to read number 1, number 3, number 4, number 8, and verse number 19. I'm going to jump through these. I took this script, this whole passage. I could have read it to you, but you can read it yourself. But I want to take out the nuggets of Psalms 34. Are you ready? Verse 1 says, and y'all can help me. I will bless the Lord at his praise shall be continually in my mouth. Oh, I could stop there and just enjoy a moment. I will bless the Lord when sometimes? All the time. I will praise him when I feel like it. Continually. Continually. Verse 3 says, oh, magnify the Lord with me. You know, if we start magnifying the Lord instead of our stuff, Whew, man, I tell you, I'm preaching to somebody today. Let me preach this way a while. Everybody say, oh, magnify. magnify. We need to take our magnifying glass out, and we need to magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. Yes, Verse 4 says, I, I began to seek the Lord. I sought the Lord, and he answered me. Oh, and listen to this. He delivered me from all my fears. How many fears did he deliver you from? Shouldn't have any more. Come on. Verse 8. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is what? Good. The enemy says he ain't. The Lord is what? Good. 
The enemy says he's not any good, that he, he ain't taking care of you. He ain't doing what he said he would do. He just don't want you to be like him. See, Satan told all these lies in the beginning. But I tell you right now, the Lord is good, and blessed is the man who trusts in him. Come on, amen? But I like verse 19. <laughs> because, see, church, let's just get real. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Y'all didn't shout on that one too well. I said many are the afflictions of the righteous. And we usually stop right there. That's enough for me. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. And that's our way of going along and talking about our negativity. Well, many are the afflictions of the righteous, the Bible says. And I'm just going through all these afflictions. And I just don't know what I'm, what's happening. I just know all these afflictions. And, but the, many are the afflictions of the righteous. Anybody in here with me today that understands that many are the afflictions of the righteous? But I like the last part. Don't forget this part. Don't forget this part. But the Lord delivers him or delivers her out of them all. How many? All. You, you got to get this, church, because these are the scriptures you need to be standing on in the midst of everything that you're facing that he said many are the afflictions. But, but it don't matter about the affliction. It matters that my God is good and he will deliver me out of them all. You know, the biggest thing we have doing is resisting the enemy's lies. It's one of the biggest battles I think happens because we hear the word, we know what the word says, but we don't resist the lie. Stand on the truth of who God is. He is, he is truth. Everybody say that. He is truth. He is grace. He is strength. He is mercy. How many's bad? He's mercy. Amen? Amen? And I'm so glad that he's for me. But see, there were some things that I began, I was, I was reading and studying. There's some things I feel like because he's for us, he wants us to overcome. See, there's a lot of things that Satan, his deceptions come from things like this. He loves to get you tired. I know John Hagee said one time, he said the word busy. This has been many years ago. He took the word busy and he said, you know what that means? How many, how many here is busy? How many ever used that word? I'm just busy. Anybody? John Hagee used this word. He broke busy down. He said it's bound under Satan's yoke. Satan wants you so busy, you ain't got time for God. He wants you so busy that you ain't got time to read. He wants you so busy that you ain't got time to pray. And he gets you so busy, you can't even remember it's Sunday. He gets you so busy that, that, that you, you say, well, I, I can't do it. I can't serve. I can't this. I can't that. See, God... God said he wants you. He wants to use you. He wants to do these things in you. But he wants the very thing Satan wants to do is get you tired and busy. And then you know what comes with busy? Anxiety. And you know what comes with anxiety? Stress. Don't tell me it ain't, it ain't happening in your life. You'd be lying like a dog. Amen. Busy, anxiety, stress. And then when you get all that going on, then you're so easily tempted. Then when you're tempted, you begin to fear because of the temptations in your life. And then, all of a sudden, you don't realize it, but now you're listening to all of his lies. And then there's something that rises up after the lies come. You start wanting revenge instead of forgiveness. I know that's a hard to swallow. I'll give you a minute. But it's, with lies bring revenge. Lies bring revenge. Satan says, revenge. You're like, yes. God says, no. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. Well, God, they need vengeance. They, there needs to be vengeance on them. Well, if that's true, then look in the mirror. Every one of us in here deserve vengeance. You say, well, I don't, Pastor. Look in the mirror one more time. There's something at some point in your life that you did that God gave you mercy instead of vengeance. <laughs> I, I hope somebody's hearing me today, but I'm thankful God gave me grace and mercy instead of vengeance. Amen? Amen. 
I'm glad he said, I forgive you. I love you. I, I love you. I'm, I'm so glad God is for me. Amen. And he's not against me. So many people today think God is against them because, well, I failed. And this is the biggest lie of the devil is when somebody makes a mistake and falls short of the glory of God, it's like, I'm done. No, God ain't done. God's reaching his hand down, waiting for them to reach up. And that's where you and I as believers have to be. When we see our brother fall, it ain't to kick him down. It's to reach down and help him back up. Amen. Put an arm around him and tell him I love you. Amen. And know that God has done the same for us. Hallelujah. If God be for me. The Bible says in Romans 8, Romans 8 and 31, if God be for us. Who can be against us? And I know many of you knew I was going to that scripture. But see, I'm not staying there because there's many more that tells me how good God is to me. See, we, we have situations in our life. And, and we expect it to be the drive through at McDonald's. Amen? And I know I use food. I don't go there anymore. But I, I know what it was like when I went to the drive through You pull up to the window and you say, I'd like to have this. And they, they take your order. And you pull up around and you give your tithe. You pull up the next window and they hand you a food. We got this mind concept. Satan has used the fast food world to tell you God don't care about you because he don't do it in the timing that you think he should. I'm going to tell you right now, I've been through the McDonald line and I've got to the drive through window and they'd say, would you please pull up? <laughs> Anybody? Y'all, some of y'all know me well enough. I've told this story way years ago. But my mama was the worst. And I didn't want to ever be my mama. And there was a day I ended up being my mama. Amen. But my mama, I always got behind the seats. I hid. I didn't want to be seen in the vehicle with my mom. Because my mom would tell him at the drive-thru, no, I stay right here. I'm just fine. <laughs> just pull up. But there was a day of my weakness. I'm going to tell on myself. There was a day in my weakness. I went to McDonald's in Tontytown after they first opened many years back. And they know they were new. They were training. But Gary got me. It just, woo! I got up that drive through And they said, would you please pull forward? It was not the day. And it wasn't the moment. And I didn't renew my mind that day. And my mama come out of me. And I said, no, I'm just fine right where I'm at. That girl didn't know what to say, and I didn't either after that. <laughs> she shut the window, and then I was concerned about my food. <laughs> what would be in my drink? You know, you start thinking, though, see how the enemy, I mean, see how our thoughts do? Are y'all with me? You see how that simple thing can unplay all this stuff, right? In your mind, in your thoughts. And if he can do it at a drive through at McDonald's, I wonder in your life every day how he's working on your thoughts. I wonder what somebody thinks about. I wonder what this. I wonder what that. Uh, this and that. That over there. I mean, enemy loves to do it, right? But how many know that God is for us? How many know He's for you? I'm gonna give you some. I'm gonna give you some real good scriptures to stand on this week. Are you ready? Write these down or call me. I'll give them to you. Isaiah 43, verse two through four. He says, "When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers." They shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, anybody feel like you're walking through some fire today? You shall not be burned, nor the flame scorch you. For I am the Lord your God, and since you were precious in my sight, you have been honored, and I have loved you. Listen to this last verse. He said, since you were precious in my sight, you have been honored, and I have loved you. Therefore, I will give men for you and people for your life. Come on, amen. How many know that God loves you? He is for us. When he feels others have forgotten or maybe forsaken us. God is for us. This is happening many in our society today, but it's crazy. And I ain't going to get into a lot of anything here, but you can read all this scripture and understand where we are. Can a woman forget her nursing child and not have compassion on the son of her womb? 
This is where the enemy is lying in our society right now. Do you understand what I'm saying? There's no compassion for the womb anymore. These people that have, I'm going to say this, I'm going to say it bluntly, and I know I'm live, they may kick me off, but here it goes. The bottom line is you can kick me off, but you can't kick God's word out. Amen? Amen. The bottom line is right here, the son of the womb is an important part, and people that have, have made the mistake in giving their child through an abortion can be forgiven. Let's don't judge them. Let's love them. Amen? we got to love them. These are, these, are, these are girls and ladies and women that have made some bad mistakes and possibly the person in their life made a wrong choice. How many's ever made a wrong choice? It hasn't been that one, but how many know we like to judge people because of that one instead of just forgiving? Come on, amen? Surely they may forget. That's what it says. Surely they may forget. Yet I, oh, come on, tell me, God said, I will not forget you. I have inscribed you on the palm of my hand. Oh, I don't know about you. That does, I mean, I'll just rejoice for myself. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for putting my name in your hand. Amen? He's got D, D. Walker right there inscribed in his hand. He got Dwayne Drew. He got Jeremiah even right there inscribed in his hand. Amen? I, I mean, that, you ought to get excited about it. You say, well, that don't really do anything for me. Let me tell you something. There are people getting tattoos all the time. Do you get tattoos, Pastor? No, I just don't. I'm not brave enough to get one. Amen? I'm not brave enough. I've said it many times. We the most tattooed church in the, probably northwest Arkansas. You don't even want to start asking that question. But they, what you do when you get a tattoo, tattoo is you inscribe something on your skin. Come on. And that has a meaning behind it, right? People always, I always see people with ink, and I'll go, well, what does that mean? And they'll tell me their story. It's amazing to hear some people's stories. Some of them I probably, wish, probably shouldn't ask. <laughs> <There's> some, <laughs> just ignore them, okay? I'm just saying, ignore them inks. But there's a lot of inks that will have a scripture on it, or it will have a date on it. And it will be a memory or something of someone or somebody. Do you understand that God himself in the palm of his hand, which is not even close to the size of hand you and I can even imagine, he has inscribed our names in his hand? That's how much he loves you. I say that's how much he loves you. Amen? Psalm 37, 25 says, I've been young and now I'm old, yet I've not ever seen the righteous forsaking or nor his descendants begging for bread. Come on, give the Lord a praise for that. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hebrews 13, 5 and 6 says, For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man can do to me. You know why? Because if God be for me, who can be against me? Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 33 and 3 says, Call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not even know. There's not a moment that goes by that God don't think about you. There's not a day that goes by that God don't reach out and try to have fellowship with you. See, the thing that hurt God in the beginning was not that Eve listened to Satan. It was because fellowship was broken. When that fellowship got broken, when the fellowship got broken, God Walked into the garden that day where he had always went. He said, Adam, where are you? Adam, where are you? Was silent, just like it is in here. Adam was nowhere to be found. But God knew where he was. Isn't it funny when you and I fail and make mistakes and, and, and think that we, isn't it amazing we think we can hide from God? It's like me hiding behind this pulpit. <laughs> Y'all can still see me. I know it's really, really down to childish things, but I'm going to tell you the childish things was 
Foolish things of this world is what confounds the wise. This is how we look to God. Y'all can still see me, and we're down here hiding from God. I've got a cover. <laughs> Maybe if I close my eyes, it ain't good. What if I close my eyes? I forgot about that. Sorry. If I close my eyes, Maybe they, nobody can see me. Maybe God can't see me then. The Bible says the first blood covenant was at that moment when Adam and them cut the leaf and made the leaves around their body to hide themselves because it's the first time in their life they ever realized they were actually naked. The fellowship was broken. God knew where he was. And God asked him the question, who told you those things? And he said, it's the woman you gave me. Come on, men, you use it all the time. You know how y'all talk in men's meetings. I'm just kidding, wives. Calm down out there. We all know that men, we're the head of the house, but our wives are the neck. <laughs> Adam said, I'm going to scoot back. Can you catch all that for me? <laughs> Adam said, it's the woman you gave me. Is that what he said? Eve, God goes to Eve and says, where would all this happen at? She said, it's the devil's fault. She pointed her finger. How many know we're good at pointing fingers? Everywhere but right here. It's always somebody else's fault. Take ownership and say, I failed. Take ownership and say, I sinned. Take ownership and say, you know what? I'm not as perfect as I thought I was. Take ownership and say, you know what? I need to forgive somebody. You say, do I? But if I forgive them, then I'm, I'm not. No, no, don't worry about what God got to do. After. Do it. Do what God says. Amen? But the fellowship with God is so important. The last part of this. Christian, come on back so they know I'm closing. The mountains shall depart and the hills be removed, but my kindness shall not depart from you. How many is thankful for that today? Amen? Amen. Nor shall my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord who has mercy on you. How many is thankful for mercy? Amen. Would you stand in this building if you're thankful for mercy today? Amen? Let each of us settle this today. Many of us in here need to settle some stuff in our soul. We need to settle some stuff in our spirit today. We need to settle some stuff in our thoughts. When we read, is it what we want or is it what God wants? God wants us to declare his word. He wants us to declare his word and say, God is for us. God is for us. Say it out loud one time. It'll make you feel better. Say, God is for us. It just feels better when you say it. Let us, God, let us today. Let our commitment today be made to you. That we will protect the thoughts. We will protect the things that are coming into these ears, into these thoughts. Serving you, God, because we know you love us. We know, God, that you have, you have our backs. When we, when we mess up, God, you still love us. And you never give up on us. Thank you, Jesus, for that today. Amen. Not working not working at it not receiving it, amen earn God's love is not the way to do it but to receive his love is the way to do it, amen I want you to do this one thing with me today I want you to begin searching in your heart I want you to begin searching your heart today and I normally don't I normally don't do this at this moment. At this, I, I, I just feel it this morning. But I want you to search your heart today. 
Is your heart really, really pure before God? Is your heart really in a place that's pleasing to God? Not to man, but to God. Is your heart really pure? This morning, if there's anyone in this building, and you say, Pastor, I have failed. And don't you dare be ashamed to step out today. Don't you dare. Satan will tell you not to do it. But I'm telling you right now, he's a liar. He's a father of all lies. And he wants to keep you defeated. But today, there is going to be some victory in this house. There's going to be some victory in some lives today. And I, I'm asking right now, if you're here, in your heart today, if you have failed in any area, and you say, Pastor, I need, I need restored. Make this the moment right now. Come on, I, I don't want if it's one person, two person, three, there's two already. You just said, Pastor, I failed. This is nobody to judge anything. This is to say, God, I need you. This is not to point anybody out or anything out, but God, I need you today. I need you today, God. I need you today. You know what? They need, they need somebody behind them too. Come on. Anyone here right now say, Pastor, I, I, I need to come and lay I want to pray with them. Come right now. Come right now. I'm going to open this up. I normally don't. This ain't normal for me. But right now, I, I'd like to have somebody, one person in behind every person today. Let them know they're not alone. Let them know they're not alone right now. Let them know they're not alone. They're not alone. And I need everybody in this building right now, before I give any other offer go, I want to pray with these. Father, in the name above all names, the name of Jesus. Father, they're making some things right before you, God. They're making some things right. They're getting some things in order right now. God, that some things that may, may not even, God, you know them. <laughs> you knew it before they walked up here, God, what was going on in their life. Right now, I pray for restoration. I pray for healing. I, God, I pray right now that you give strength. And God, right now, renew their mind. Transform them right now, Father. And renew their minds. Renew their minds in this place. Set anew in their spirit, God. Set anew in them right now. Father, they're bowed. They're, they're kneeling down before you. Some are standing before you, God. And they're looking to you for that peace and that answer and that knowing today, God. And through the word we have proved, God, you are there for them and how much you love them, God. You've not thrown them away, but God, you, you reached out and loved them this morning. You've reached out and loved them this morning. In this place right now, God. Hallelujah. Continue to pray. Continue to talk. Continue to minister that person there when you're in front of. Continue to encourage them. Come on, continue to encourage them in the spirit right now. Continue to encourage them, hallelujah, right now. In the name of Jesus. Now, for some others that are out there still today. Satan has lied and lied and lied and lied and lied. And if you're really sick and tired of his lies... And you're really making a commitment today to say, no more. I want you to step out right now. Come on. Come on and step out here in this area. We're going to stand with you today. Are you sick and tired of the lies? Are you tired of them? Come on. Come on. Right on over here. Come on. Lies right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come on over here, sis. In the name of Jesus. Or anyone kneeling, one here. Lies. Are you tired of the lies? In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Tired of them, God. I'm ready for them to be done today. In Jesus' name, right?
Take that and leave it, amen? If you'll be seated just a minute, I have one more thing as they play softly here. They can play. Uh, I, want, I want to just make a couple announcements today. And we're, uh, we're still working on the land out there, still getting some things together there to do some things headed in some good directions in that. Uh, I know in just this, they, I think, there you are. I looked over here and like, he's behind me. Uh, but Cameron gave me a, re- a little report this past week. And, you know, we had not talked much about it. We don't normally talk a lot about land, all that stuff, first year. Once we get this land paid off, man, we're going we're gonna to start making a splash toward the new new, new things. Amen? How many excited about the new things? Amen? That's awesome. But uh, I just want to give the Lord praise for, for already this year, just keep on every dollar counts. Amen? But already this year, $950 is coming in against the note. And that should put us down around the 41 mark, shouldn't it? Somewhere 41, getting close to that 40 mark. But, uh, you know, we started last June with a, a pretty good pretty good chunk. And it's already down to that 40. We're starting to slide into the 30 part. And it ain't even been a year. How many believe with me that, that God's got a plan? Amen? Hallelujah. I believe it. The three of you that believe with me, I receive it. Amen? How many other believe it in here? Come on, give him a praise. Amen? Hallelujah. But... Uh, just want to kind of give you an update on that. We haven't, like I say, we don't just stand up here. It ain't our focus. Talk about it. you know it's there. We know it's there. And we know God's working on our behalf. Amen. And uh, when it happens, man, this place is going to be lit up. We're going to be rejoicing. God, God is going to just, it's going to be a great day. Amen. And so we're thankful for all the things he's doing. But one thing I want to, want to do right now is I want my wife to come up here. Wife. Come on, wife. Everybody say, wife, well, bring him with you or hand him to Stacy. She's right there. It's good. She, she using that bubble, that, the baby excuse. He likes to come up front. If he's awake, he'd be up here. But uh, you don't stand there? I got to give you a microphone. See, uh, my wife, uh, she's usually behind the scenes of this thing a lot. And uh, her birthday is Tuesday. Her birthday's Tuesday. She's going to be 29. 29 and holding. And if you let go, how much? 30, okay. We'll let her believe what she wants to believe, all right? But but uh, she'll have her birthday on Tuesday. And uh, this month, it's kind of a kind of one of the things. How many, how many was born... Born in around Christmas. There's only one here, I think. And it's not just you know, three. But you know, you know, if you're born, you know, the thing is, the the lady's coming. The her birthday is this month, and then also nationally known, March is Pastor's Wife Appreciation Month. And so uh, I want to appreciate her. She does a lot, like I say, behind. Uh, I know she. How she prays, I know how she lives, and she has to put up with me. Enough said right there, right? But I want to tell her I appreciate her. I appreciate her more than anything else. Because without her, this don't work. We are a team. This team is what makes this go. And and I'm thankful for the last... I know here, 10 years, going on 11, we planted this church, it's been work. It's been a lot of work. And she ain't up here on Sunday preaching, but she's doing a lot behind this thing. Most times she's pushing me even harder. So, But I want you to, I want you to do this for me, and I want you to appreciate her today with me. And... Uh, Ever how you want to do it? I've not got any way of doing this. I have a, uh, I have a couple of cards that have come in that have come in, and I know others. They may, they may have something, or they may want to say we love you. Whatever you want to do, but I want you now. You at this time, if you have anything you want to give her, or you just want to come by and let her know how much you appreciate her do that right now. We're going to take a moment because I appreciate you.
And I thank you for all you do, baby. I love you. I love you. How many want to hear me sing happy birthday? I don't have a key. I don't have a key. Just just hit one. Whoa, 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 whoa. We got to sing happy birthday. Here, I'll hold it. Let me hit it. Everybody sing it. Ready? One, two, three. Hit it, Christy. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Shake somebody's hand, tell them how much you love them, and tell them how much you appreciate them as they go out. Amen.